Behind me is the broadcast tower for the second oldest TV station west of the Mississippi River, KSDK, or Channel 5 as it's known around here in St. Louis. This 1,000-foot tower pumps out over 800,000 watts of ERP and covers a million households in the St. Louis area. And right next to it, there's a driving range called Tower T, a place where I and many other St. Louis kids hit their first golf ball. I'll never be on a PGA Tour broadcast, but I do want to learn more about how one is transmitted. Today on Gearling Engineering, my dad and I are exploring what's inside that transmitter building behind me, and just like the megawatt FM tower we explored last year, this tower is home to more than just TV. Uh, yeah, in fact, I have a 250 watt FM station on this tower. Well, we'll have to take a look at that too, but first let's go inside and see how the TV transmitter works. So we're standing in the main transmitter room. This is where the transmitter is, all the feeds come in and everything. Can you explain how does the signal for TV get into this room from the studio? Yeah, so the studio has equipment that kind of packages all the pictures together, all the channels, because they have HD 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And it puts them into a stream, and at the studio there's two boxes. One is a fiber box, sends it out fiber, and the other is a RF box that sends it out a microwave. A uh, microwave is a 7.5 gigahertz microwave in this rack, the main and a backup unit, auto switching, and then the fiber is down here in this rack. They're converted and then put into a switching box so that any one of those feeds can be put into the transmitter exciter. Well, I was here many years ago, and that was a long row of racks and transmitter equipment uh, over there. So they went from analog with a main and a backup uh, to uh, the HD transmitter over in that space that's empty now to their new HD transmitter. This transmitter here is actually two transmitters. Each one do, does everything they need and they can switch either one on the air or both uh, together mixed. So that's a, that's a big difference. As you look at the size difference of what a place would take. So, so once the signal comes out from either the microwave or fiber and they process it, send it over, I'm guessing is that all digital nowadays? Uh, yeah, 100% IP, and uh, you'll see stuff, you know, it makes you, it makes you think about your IP world a lot. That's a lot of packets of data that have to all be right all the time, 24 hours a day, uh, to make the TV station right. And I think I saw in one of the uh, microwave links, it said it was like 77 megabits. 77 so megabits, yeah, pretty, that's... Pretty big amount of data compared yes. to FM radio, which is what? The full HD 1 and 2, the HD part of that for the data stream is like 128 kilobits. So that's very tiny HD, but they have the analog carrier taking up most of the space. The TV guys switched to 100% digital many years ago, made a mandate, which is really helpful because it made everybody replace their TVs. See, radio guys, we did not do an update and mandate it to anything special. So once it gets into this transmitter, uh, it used to be on the, on the TV side, there would be like FM audio and AM video, or how did that Yeah, so the, in the old TV, used to have a uh, analog carrier separate from the picture. So you'd have an analog carrier, if you looked at a spectrum analyzer, you would see an analog carrier, and then apart from that, you would see the video carrier. But I was always amazed, one of the first things when I was 12 years old, that somewhere I saw that the picture was pixel, 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 which was what we all understand now. But in the old days, it was a beam that ran, and the beam was turned intense, uh, you know, higher, lower intensity, and the color piece was three beams going in there. And all of that going on did it across the screen for all those, it was amazing. So nowadays you've got every picture being drawn on a, on a channel in here all has to be, the, the picture is, is uh, the data feeds across, it streams, every, every line is streamed over and over again, 30 frames a second or whatever they use, uh, and at uh, 1080p, um, it's, it just is, it's thrilling for the old guys to think there's that much data can flow. So what you've got here is a transmitter with a transmitter controller, uh, RF modules and power supplies down here. This, this transmitter could put out 20 something kilowatts. So right now it's running at uh, 21.3 kilowatts. Uh, and so it's, it's half of what this system is. The other half is over here. It's a twin, right? So this is a twin controller same thing, it's got the RF amps and stuff down here. And then in the middle is your control section. So the, uh, the exciters get the feeds that we talked about coming from the studio, from the microwave and the uh, fiber. Each one of these gets those feeds and either one of these can be on the air at one time, at any time, 
but you can see how you can control it to put either one of these to be the signal that splits to both of these transmitters and then combines and goes out the tower. So combining and going out the top is a lot different with this because in FM, uh, what is it, like 98.1 megahertz, something yes, like that? Yes, 98.1. So you have the coax cable, which a lot of people said was a waveguide. Yes. But it's not a waveguide, it's just no. coax, just a really, really big coax. Yeah. So can you can you walk me around and show me how the RF yeah. comes out of here? Yeah, we'll I notice there's, there's also this fun door over here, but it seems a little bit uh, redundant what? when there's also a giant hole that we could walk yeah, through Yeah, there's here. a hole. This is one of the transmitters. Each cabinet, RF cabinet, has an output. The outputs are combined. So you can see right here, they're combined to one output. So this is one transmitter. And then over here, you got the duplicate, the transmitter, two outputs for the two cabinets combined into one, another transmitter out. And you can see both of them, transmitters are going down the line, down the assembly line to get assembled into the channel five signal. So what are these crazy boxes that look like giant trash cans? So these, to my radio and ham buddies, these are bandpass filters for the TV channel. So if they're set, they're gonna be band passing for 599 megahertz. So this is a filter when you're at 20 kilowatts and filtering, uh, band pass filter for, for the 599 megahertz. You can see each one has its own you know, in and its own out. The outputs go up into this crazy looking giant, it looks like an AC duct, but that is not what it is. Can you tell me what this thing is? So this is a waveguide where you could see each, each one of these goes into a different channel here and they go through the waveguide. They're going all the way through here, staying separate, right? Waveguides all the way here, waveguide all the way to here. And now you're going out to the tower that way and you're going to a load over here, which again, hopefully it does not have much heat in it. Everything wants to go out. And so you're going out to this spot here, and then you can see there's a black box at the end and coax coming out. So they are literally taking coax up the tower. So they're converting from waveguide to coax. So you're saying that that feed line that's way back there, which looks tiny in this picture right now, but I guarantee that oh, thing is it's huge. huge. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's about as big as the last ones were in your uh, combining room at the FM yes, tower. Yes, it is. But then it goes up the tower on the FM in two pipes that are all yes. four inch or yes, something. Yes, like it splits back out of the FM and goes up as you know half the power going up each pipe. You got that guy going up, and then I see just like on the FM tower, there's also nitrogen here. Yes. Uh -huh. Providing pressure to that line keep to that, prevent arcing. Keep that line pressurized. Uh, don't let the water leak in. Make sure there's pressure so any moisture goes out. Because moisture yeah. causes arcs, and arcs moisture cause Moisture causes arcs, and arcs cause burns, and smoke inside the thing, yeah. So another thing that I saw on this transmitter is all these pipes, which I remember from the FM station were water cooling. And I noticed over here, it's actually not as loud as it was yes. at the FM station. Can you explain to me how this water cooling system is different than the FM one or well, the same? It, it's very much the same. Uh, you see the water that each, each box, each transmitting uh, section has a water in and a water out. And you can see it goes across there, so you're gonna have eight pipes. They go back to pumps, just like we had in the FMs. They pump through. The pumps are, you know, there's two uh, redundancy, a lot of redundancy in the pumps. The pumps shoot them out to a heat exchanger outside, and the heat exchanger fan blades are controlled by the pump. Uh, so as you can see, we got the pumps, redundant pumps, control for the pumps. You've got these uh, meters here, it tells you the fan speed, and this one tells you which pump is on. And you got your meters, tell your water pressure. Your supply pump is always gonna be higher pressure than your return water. Very similar to the FM, slightly different, but very similar. It's basically just a giant water cooling loop. Just yes. like you'd see it like in a PC if you had water cooling with yes. the radiator exactly and the fan the on the same it. thing. Except it's just scaled Only. up quite a bit with yeah. redundancy built in. Yes. If you have a really big PC, we have an extra one. No, <laughs> this one is actually for the load which also has to be cooled, and they, they uh, do that with the... Uh, so the, the actual cooling. dummy load here is water-cooled. Yes. yes. Because it exactly. produces that much heat. It can, yes. You're testing, uh, you're definitely going to get heat. Another thing that I, I saw immediately is somebody who's studying for an uh, amateur radio license. There's a little rack of these, these uh, receivers over uh, here yeah. that's yes. connected to this computer. Yeah. Do, you know, uh, do you know what they're doing with these things? 
Yeah, so these are, so this is a great tower, a great location to receive. These are scanners that are set up for the St. Louis metropolitan area. So they're scanning, and all of these scanners are remote controllable. So they are brought into the software, and then they're available to the newsroom uh, downtown at the uh, studio. There's uh, the oldest HD TV, CRT TV, that apparently weighs as much as like a truck. This was one of those, you know, I got a deal for you. Uh, your HD station, you need to monitor it, let's, uh, let's make a deal. Uh, but the fantastic thing is that that's a beam. So that beam is shooting out from the back there and it's being diverted and run like this. You know, those signals and color, I mean, I just, it's, I love that stuff, but it's, it's fascinating. But this is the only HD TV I've ever seen that has a tube. So I well, don't know how many of you guys have I, seen I one. I saw one or two before, but they were all 720p. I heard that uh, the reason this one is so unique is it's one of the few that was 1080p yep. CRT, which is such a rare thing to see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a Sony. Yeah, and a Sony. This is the transfer switch for the generator. A little bit bigger than we had in our FM uh, site, for sure. It certainly could fit two people in there, a phone booth. Those are some big wires. So do not touch. Do not touch. So cool. this is the building power coming in. Yep. Yeah, so you've got a lot of thick wiring here. This is the whole deal right that here. That goes to the transfer switch. Yeah. It's transfer all 480. switch goes to another power distribution. Yep. And that comes over and they, you know, for RF signals, they have to do a lot of filtering too. I know yes. there's some extra filtering equipment here that you might not have in like a general. Yeah, they do. They, and business. what's funny is uh, a box like this is a small box compared to the old school ones from 25, 30 years ago, but it also does a better job. So it's kind of interesting how you can get, you know, better filtering for your power on a smaller box. And you can see the, the old one is out here. Um, the old one right here it also has rf filtering in it and so for that reason it's still in line actually here i see there's some other power equipment here there's I, that's funny i see More distribution. A vhf and uhf yeah so crazy. i would imagine is the vhf was that for their old transmitter yeah, probably uh probably that would be the uh or that could have been for radios i don't know oh, yeah. that's a pretty big breaker 200 amps yeah that would be big for like uh, their 800 radios. amp transmitter yeah see and it says UHF panel, but UHF, uh, we do that stuff. You know, sometimes the history uh, helps correct it. And then I saw there was also this guy here, which is... Yeah, so this is a voltage regulator. It's kind of interesting. It's another layer of keeping your voltage within a certain range. And, and uh, tube transmitters, which they used to have a big, giant one. The tubes were this tall. Uh, but the tube transmitters, you really wanted to keep the filament voltages controlled to keep that tube life up. But I saw that this one even said it was... A yes. microprocessor this controller. One, yeah, as opposed to the one at your house, maybe. <laughs> this one is microprocessor control. Yeah. That's then, old school language there. And then more power distribution over here. Right, yep. Yeah. Going to, it looks like the two transmitters and then a control cabinet that's off. That must have been the old transmitter. Yeah, the old, yeah. The old analog or yeah, the, the old, old digital one. Old school sticker, uh, new school sticker. Yeah. Look at that. And then also to the uh, pumps and heat exchangers. Another way that they can get video and data into this building is through a dish like this. They have two of these dishes, but this one looks really cool on the back side. It looks like there's a motor down there. This one is like motor controlled. That is a motor. He could tune in about any satellite here. And of course they're locked in. They're an NBC affiliate. So they're locked in right now on NBC. Uh, but they have, if you look over there, they have KU band and C band, uh, horizontal and vertical. That's why you got four wires out there and stuff like that. So this is a cool dish. Any engineer would love to have this dish at his tower site or at a studio. It's a great dish. So you mentioned inside the building, uh, we had the power in, coming into the building here, but also there's the giant generator. Yeah. This thing does look like it's a little bit bigger it is than the, uh, the one at the FM site. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a two full-size door deal here. So you got you know, two doors on each side for maintenance. Uh, it's a big one. And if we look back here through here, you can also see those, the uh, heat exchangers back there yep. for the uh, water cooling. So this was to the original transmitter uh, that I think they developed something like 35 to 40 kilovolts. And these are the transformers that take the 480 and make it in, I believe the high voltage came out here, I think, uh, right here, but it would be, you know, like 40,000, 35, 40,000 volts coming out of the side. And it is dead, I'm, I've tested that. So, yeah. So inside the building, we saw that line coming up through the roof, and it was copper inside. Is this still copper here? That is still, that's called weathered copper. 
And you, you said that there was also some, uh, a couple like backup FM transmitters in here too? Yeah, so in the back here, you can see the two doors. This little back of the building is uh, two of the FMs. There's a, uh, antennas for them up on the tower and uh, their cables leave and stay lower. And then they have their generator back there and air conditioner units. You can and see so, right there. So they all come out here and come yeah. this way, but then there's also this little extra building right at the base oh, of the tower. One of my favorite little buildings. Yeah. So we have a very good signal here servicing a lot of people. Uh, 250 watts uh, translator in here, and uh, it's it's um, uh, one of our AMs. You can get these translator frequencies at 250 watt ERP, uh, and we got an antenna uh, way up there at 712 feet, 712 and a half to be precise. The main TV feed line is up here, and it goes straight up the tower, and it that's I'm sure very heavy. And then there's the couple FMs. There's other things coming out of this building. It all goes up. It looks like it's a lot less than the super tower, but there's still probably 30 or 40 cables. But one other thing I noticed in this tower that's a lot different is this little cage in the middle here, and there's all these pulleys at the bottom. That yeah. is an elevator. So uh, back when these towers were built in the 50s and 60s, a lot of the tall, bigger towers, would, they'd have an elevator, and they're literally the engineers for the stations would be able to jump in there, go grab an antenna, carry it up to the top and mount it. <clears throat> now they're they're a little more dangerous looking now to people than they were back in the 50s and 60s. So quite a few towers do not want to ensure and, and maintain the elevators. And the climbing systems they have now and the people that go up, uh, they've, they've got um, a climbing wire where they can clip to it as they climb and so the guys climb. Is there, there's another TV station in this little building? Yeah, yeah, you want to see what a small low power TV station looks like. We've That's, got that in here too. I like how you call that low power and the wire is still about <laughs> 20 times larger than any I've ever used. Yeah. Higher frequency, uh, more loss. So this used to be a cellular installation. And the cellular guys, everything's built by a spec, so you kind of can see the structural pieces they put in. <clears throat> Not sure we would have put them up, put them in like this just for radio and a low power TV, but it's awesome. It's great to have the resource. So we have, uh, this is my translator here. it got the uh, monitoring capability, a remote control, audio devices, audio processor, transmitter, UPS. And I've got two internet uh, feeds. I got a fiber and a cable, and what, this underground, that's above ground. This is a TV station right here. So it's fully automated remotely, fed from IP and satellite. So uh, you'll see different you know, receivers here from satellite getting different channels. They're modulated and put into the uh, TV transmitter here with the equipment down here. And you see a computer down here. I think they inject. Uh, things through that computer as needed and so this whole this whole setup here is like a mini shrunk down version of what was in the other yeah. building yeah this is what's in there studios elsewhere transmitter is here and it's the equip that br equipment that brings in all of the different signals again like we saw at one of the fm sites this this is the output of this tv system it goes up hits and look at the cable change the cable size so they're changing it because the transmitter power, they want to deliver it to the antenna that's probably 600 feet up, and so they only can tolerate so much loss. These are filters because there's a frequency close by at a, a 100,000 watt station close by, and so this is to uh, drain their energy before it hits my transmitter so that I don't suck any of that in on my cable. I mean, literally, we're up both together she, he's shooting 100,000 watts right into my antenna at a frequency only a few bits off. So it's like uh, we put the filter in to be careful and you can feel a little warmth on there. It's doing something. So just like the FM Super Tower, this tower has a lot going on. It also has 70 years of radio history, like this strange microwave dish in the ceiling of the transmitter building. They originally had a microwave signal bounced directly off the tower into the transmitter room, but they don't use it anymore or those weird bow ties on the antenna at the top. What were they for? And how will this site evolve as more and more people stream TV over IP? Transmitter sites are like living organisms. There are so many stories that we haven't even touched on. <laughs> if only these walls could talk. Well, they might if this were an AM tower. Hopefully we'll visit one of those soon, so make sure you subscribe.